hello and uh, welcome to this uh, video so what I want to cover today is what we call interpolation and I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about about um, what interpolation does and why it's needed in spatial analysis so here um, these are some of the things we're going to cover we talk about IDW and I think I introduced you to IDW when we're doing the the um, the house parts um, using the model but then the other other um, tools that we use in doing interpolation include the natural neighbor and then what we call Kriggin so what we will do is let's tackle what interpolation is so pretty much think about it as being an educated guess and what do we mean by that is that you know values at certain locations okay so let's say we know values of this particular locations and then we are asked to predict the values of where we do not have any any measurement taken so what we are saying is that because we know the measurements of these guys we can use that to find the value an estimated guess of what the value is going to be at a particular um, location and the way this this really helps is that if you if you consider something like weather station right think about the, how they get the estimated weather forecast for your um, your city or your um, your state or wherever think about it to be that EP, EPA does not have or the weather station do not have stations all over the country what they have it they have it selected at particular cities and based on the values they measure at th those cities they can interpolate and know what the value is going to be at any particular location so what interpolation really makes us to do is you know what we talk about the tubeless first law or the first law of geography and what the first law of geography you know, pretty much states is that you know um, all things are related but you know, clo um, the closer things are more um, alike than distant uh, things that are, are far apart so what it means is that if you are closer to something you are going to be closely related to that thing than if you are further away from that so what it means is that if these guys all have flu chances are the one in the middle is also going to have a flu than somebody who is way out over here who is not closer to those ones that have a flu so that is a, pretty much the first law of geography that if you are closer to something you are likely to you know relate better to it so if we have a value of objects here and we want to find a value that is in here we can use their measurement over here to have an educated guess of what the value is going to be at the location that we do not have any measurement physical measurement taken and that is pretty much what um, uh, interpolation allow us to do so here what we do is um, interpolation is pretty much you are going to measure the cell values and based on the cell values is going to use to predict the surface of um, of or give you a, a, a smooth surface which will have values for um, any 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 place in between where measurements were made and where measurements were not made and you have it like you know this example shows like a, a malaria risk factor so from one to nine you know in this case one being high and nine being less less influence so as you predict and you do um, your forecasting these are what some of you, you know, some of the things that you're going to see that you know you're going to have a, you know the likelihood of where your values are going to be high and then the likelihood that your factor is going to be low as you move further away from the um, from from the sample location so here so if you are the best thing you to do is that if you're doing to try and do interpolation this the sampling space needs to be well distributed so if you have enough points in that study area then your likelihood of finding the places that do not have any sample space values are going to be correct because the observation stations are evenly distributed or randomly distributed right so we don't want that all the values are here there's nothing north of the of the river but yet we want to find values in the river area no we have to take some samples over there as well in order to be able to get those uh, values estimated values from that end all right so 
So what if we're doing so here if you can take a look at it to see you have what the values of the of measurement at those points and then as you can see if you translate it over here this is where how it looks like on the heat map all right with the cell values right now the same thing you can use it for for contours so you can you we can use those values to generate contours and as you can see where you have those rings which are pretty much showing you where you have those hot spots okay and then as you go further away you can see that the the the, the intensity decreases as you move further away from that um so there are tools that comes with your rgis um uh to uh, device that we are going to use and this this week i'm just going to introduce you to the idw and the cricket okay now there's another one another um, uh, spatial analysis extension that is called the geostatistical analysis and we will do something with that actually we, there will be an exercise on that for interpolating um the weather weather forecast um and also um no weather actually is a co2 co2 emissions in the atmosphere so in that exercise for instance we will have measurement from the epa and then what we are going to do is we'll use that to be able to predict the amount of ozone in the atmosphere um which is how we, we see the the amount of uh, the parts per million ppm values that are in any city that you live in and that is one way that you use um hotspot or interpolation uh to really come up with that all right now the idw pretty much stands for an inverse distance weighted okay so what it does is it, it averages the values of the samples um near a cell obviously if the points are closer together they are going to have more influence okay service will not pass through a sample averaging it cannot predict hills or value so it doesn't care whether there's hill or value all it's looking at is what those samplings uh, are and where how pro, um, close they are together the natural neighbor is also another method that we use to predict values of unknown or unknown area so what it does is it creates like a what we call it like a fish a fishnet kind of scenario and then it builds it builds this analytics based on that um that logic so based on that is how it's going to you know create that hole and pretty much uh that use the techniques and the mathematical formulas that the software comes with is what it uses to um to do its interpolation um and that's an example of how a natural neighbor um once you have given it the values of the sample space how it's going to run and give you an output. The Kragen is another method that is well used, and this is more of an advanced geostatistical method. So pretty much it's, it has more mathematical formulas and it's used to, or its mathematical formulas are more refined to be able to allow you um, to do good analysis or predict um, good values, all right? And what it does is it does create a, you know, um, it would take into consideration whether it's a hill or uh, or valleys in that in that study area so that is good Kriggin is one that we we'll use um, so controlling the sample points so idw and Kriggin all controls um those sample points that is it's using all right so pretty much it's, it does with what radius so either you're going to have a variable radius uh right expand to uh, to find minimum um, numbers of sample or you can have a fixed radius whereby it's going to find um, the samples within a specified radius so if you say i want a hundred or a thousand uh, radius then it's going to go in and see thousand radius how many points are there all right so you can do that um see barriers to interpolate interpolation all right so as we talked about fault line cliffs those do not really take into consideration all is interpolation is doing is you have values here you have values here you have values here find the values that uh, find the values for areas that you do not have any samples for so that's why it's going to um it's, it's really going to take um, effect if you have hills and valleys and all those things interpolation is not going to take that into consideration when it's um, doing the analysis um, 
let's see all right so first what a couple of things you want to do is you want to um, make sure that your, your accuracy of the surface is good you have to remove your uh, sample create surface and I'm going to walk you through some uh, uh, an example of um, of this and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there so pretty much interpolation is anytime you are given a sample space or you have sample values and you want to find the values of on um, areas that you did not do in the sampling then you can be able to use interpolation to see roughly how many um, uh, what would be the value of the areas that you did not do any um, sampling at that so we'll take some we'll take a look um, and this is used by CDC to do you know studies on uh, um, approximately how many people might be suffering from a particular disease um, based on the reports that they've already counted for different let's say health facilities or um, different reports of cases and that will give them the intensity of um, of how of how serious a particular virus can be I mean if you look at it um, from the heat map you see of the flu season that is how those heat maps are generated based on the reported cases at those hospitals or those um, uh, cities or state based on that you can use that to predict a heat map to see how the, the flu is going to uh, travel throughout the whole um, country so that is an overview of um, of an interpolation I will do the next video to show you how to get that done and then I'll give you some data for you to uh, get this done but this is what I want you guys to do I want this video to be reviewed I want those labs to be done today and I want them to be also submitted today so that we keep in compliance that if we were supposed to have met if I was down there we would have been in class and get it taken care of so I look forward to that and I will see you guys um, I'll put the next video together shortly